In 2024, Skyrim turns 13, which means the players have been able to discover just about every nook and cranny this game has to offer. Despite this, most players are unaware of the many things this game lets you do. So today, we're going to show you 9 things you probably didn't know you could do in Skyrim. Number 1. Give followers infinite carry weight. Followers are immensely useful in all Bethesda games, but thanks to Skyrim's abundance of valuable jewelry, metals, and items, the followers in this game are a cut above the rest. Yet, as useful as they are, eventually all of them will run out of space to carry your burdens. At least, that's what Bethesda wants you to think. In reality, all followers can have an infinite pool of carry weight with a simple trick Bethesda forgot to take into account. When your followers are carrying all they can, simply drop the items you want them to carry on the ground and command them to pick it up. They'll do so regardless of the carrying weight being a capacity. So, the next time Lydia complains about not being able to carry any more, you can now remind her that chronic back pain is just a Thalmor conspiracy and get her to carry more anyway. Number 2. Take an archery lesson It goes without saying that I love being a stealth archer as much as the next person, but it's not exactly a challenging playstyle. I don't care who you manage to kill, aiming at your opponents without them ever seeing you is hardly a display of your skills. If you really want to put your archery to the test, then you'll have to test your might with Angie. Found at a camp in the Falkreath Mountains, Angie is a little more unique than most skill trainers. Instead of giving you a skill level in exchange for a couple of hundred septims, Angie is willing to offer a full-fledged lesson in Archery 101 at a shooting range. Best of all, Angie doesn't want any money. All she asks for is a willingness to learn and a passion for the art of archery. Like any short course, the lesson amounts to a few minutes of lecturing until you can finally stretch your muscles at a shooting range with a challenge. There are three challenges in total, and passing each one earns a point in archery. And if you manage to complete her final challenge, she'll even throw her bow into the prize pool as a sign of respect. Number 3. Fly Through the Intro Quest Skyrim's first few quests are as nostalgic as they are boring. I'm sure playing through these on my first playthrough was a captivating experience that transported me into a world rich with lore and political turmoil. Or maybe it wasn't, because I was a stupid kid that wouldn't have understood any of that. Regardless, the first couple of hours of this game are an absolute snooze fest, so it's in your best interest to get through them as fast as possible. This can be done in two main ways. First, you should always go to Bleak Falls Barrow before meeting Farangar, so you can skip the trip back and get a nice compliment to boot. Immediately after this, Irileth orders you and Farangar to meet with Jarl Balgruf after a dragon attacks the Western Watchtower. But instead of listening to Irileth, simply ignore her orders and immediately make your way to the Watchtower instead. This will skip the entire conversation you had with Jarl Balgruf that you've probably endured hundreds of times prior. Number 4. Fast Travel While Over Encumbered Fast traveling is one of the core elements of what makes Skyrim fun. While there is a case to be made that fast travel can take away from the experience, i found that walking through the same roads for hundreds of hours is about as fun as it is in real life. Meanwhile, fast traveling can get you from point A to point B in no time, leaving all that boring walking to reality. This is why it's all the more infuriating to be locked off from this mechanic while over encumbered. As if walking like a snail wasn't bad enough, Bethesda kicks you while you're down and makes you unable to fast travel as well. But this may not have to be the case, leaving all the loot behind or, god forbid, walking all the way back to a town, you can instead turn to your horse, a mechanic that seems like a no-brainer has ironically been absent from the minds of many Skyrim players, myself included. Simply jump on a horse, open the map, and fast travel wherever you'd like. Because of this mechanic, it's a good idea to unlock Arvac as soon as possible. That way, you can have this mechanic literally right at your fingertips and never have to worry about carrying too much again. Number 5. Find Hidden Stashes The Dark Brotherhood is the Elder Scrolls mecca of near-do-wells and depravity, so it comes to the surprise of no one that Skyrim lets you outfit your sanctuary with a torture chamber, complete with several captives. Though the captives are great target practice, lab rats, and vampiric livestock, they have a much more useful trait up their sleeve. 
Apparently, the Dark Brotherhood kidnapped Skyrim's biggest introverts, because while beating them silly does nothing, just a few minutes of small talk will make them give in and reveal all their secrets. In this case, that would be a hidden stash they tucked away from the eyes of even the most keen-eyed adventurers. Going to the location marked on your map will reveal their treasure to be a hefty sum of gold, ranging from 1 to 2,000 septims to be exact. Not only does this easily pay back the cost of buying the chamber in the first place, but you should even have some spare change on the side as well. Number 6. Get a house for free Both in Skyrim and real life, homes are one of the most expensive things you can spend your hard-earned money on. But considering Skyrim is a video game, we get the special privilege of exploiting its mechanics to allow us to get a home for free. All you have to do is amass enough gold to purchase the house of your choice. Once that's complete, simply go to the court stewards and tell them you wish to purchase a home. As soon as you accept their offer, you must immediately leave the dialogue menu and place all your gold in a container. This can also work by dropping it on the floor, but it's far more risky and inconsistent. If you do everything right, you'll obtain the keys to your home with all your gold in tow. Number 7. Zero Cooldown on Shouts Shouts can almost be seen as very powerful spells on a cooldown. But what if you could remove the pesky cooldown entirely? With this trick, you can do just that. To achieve this, you're going to need 5 amulets of Talos, a follower that doesn't mind you being a werewolf, and of course, lycanthropy. Remember to save your game before attempting, then you must open a dialogue and use beast form at the exact same time. If you time it just right, you should be in a dialogue where you're a werewolf. Open up a trade with your follower and scroll down the apparel section until you find the amulet of Talos. You'll notice that you can equip as many items as you like, but we want to equip the five amulets of Talos we have. And once you get out of werewolf modes, you should have a 100% chance cooldown rate on your shouts. Number 8. Store Skill Books Skill books play a vital role in leveling your character, especially in the late game. By the time you're in the late game, it can take an entire dungeon to level up your skills. That's where the skill books come in. Distinguished by their high selling price, these books can instantly level up a skill upon reading them. The only catch is that by the time they're actually useful, you'll have already read most of these books. But of course, there's a way around this. Upon starting a fresh save, try to get a follower as soon as you can. From then on, you should always keep an eye on what you're reading. If you find an unusually valuable book, then the last thing you should do is read it. Instead, command your followers to pick the book up, allowing you to trade with them and store the book somewhere safe for later. Now, why should you save these books for later? Well, because raising your block skill from 90 to 91 is much harder than raising it from 40 to 41. So, this is why you should always save skill books for use later in the game. Number 9. Damage enemies while ethereal As far as survival mode goes, there aren't really any better shouts to have in your vocal arsenal than become ethereal. Thanks to its negation of damage and stamina, the shout is excellent for descending mountains and running long distances. But when it comes to combat, it's virtually useless. Or is it? In reality, Become Ethereal has a little exploit that went under Bethesda's nose. The Blood Skull Blade is easily the most unique weapon in Skyrim thanks to its ability. The energy blades it can shoot out are neither seen as magical nor physical damage, thus making the Become Ethereal shout go tits up when you use it. Attacking exclusively with the blade's energy streaks will allow you to remain ethereal while continuing to dish out damage. Is it useful? Not really. The attacks do little damage and become ethereal only last a short time. Still, it's pretty fun to stick it to Bethesda and corrupt the core idea of the shout. Subscribe to fall damage, you milk drinker.